the first game I ever saw was the 1982 Super Bowl. Welcome to the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. I was eight years old. We're in our living room. Dad has a lazy boy chair, and I'm in the floor in front of him playing with a football around Charlotte. We didn't have a team back then. The Redskins were in Washington, D.C. In my mind, this was America's team. Even the presidents want the Redskins to be successful. Fellas, what else is there to say but hail to the Redskins? As uh, an American patriotic, felt like the team that I needed to pull for. It's fourth down. Yeah, but here comes the diesel. They're going to go for it. Fourth and one. I remember Dad sort of buckling down like this is a big play. Go. Goal line, goal line. I left tight wing, 70 chip on white. Ready? I am fired up. Yellow 41! Yellow 41! Hunt, hunt! You were just hoping to get the first down, and he goes down there and scores his touchdown. I remember him going around the end and pushing the defender to the ground. The image of him running down the sideline, his helmet's just kind of floating on his head. John Riggins will be remembered for his remarkable performance today. That put the Redskins in the lead. They go on to win the game. That play, it was just kind of a miracle. Today, the greatest football achievement of your life. What's it mean to you? Well, I'm very happy. And uh, at least for tonight, Ron's the president, but I'm the king. <laughs> I'm not sure that, that the Allen Amici one-yard run, that anybody would look at that play and call it one of the great plays in NFL history. You could call it one of the most significant plays in NFL history. A most historic moment in football history. The New York Giants won the toss for their sudden death playoff with all the marbles on the line. Giants and Colts were, at that moment, the national franchises in the NFL. The Baltimore Colts tied with the New York Giants 17 to 17 in the sudden death. United States, he gives to Amici, and the ball game is over. Alan Amici has scored the touchdown, and the Baltimore Colts are the professional football champions of the world. In a battle of the champions, however the game ends, if it ends in overtime with a walk-off touchdown, that touchdown is going to be remembered forever. Uh, I don't know how many kickers you guys are going to put on this list because the NFL Network, NFL Films tend to be a little bit positionist and uh, not give a lot of love to the specialist. But the thought of Adam Vinatieri sending that game to overtime and then winning it, I think that is the most memorable play in the history of the NFL. Every fan in New England who'd been living with heartbreak and inevitable losses, when the tuck rule play happened, you knew doom was coming. And when that call went our way, we felt in New England for the first time that we finally got the break to go our way. After reviewing the play, the quarterback's arm was going forward. It is a All right. Patriots retain the ball. Wow. New life for the Patriots. After that, when Adam Vinatieri lined up to kick that field goal, we felt inevitably he was going to miss the kick. We don't get these breaks in New England. And here comes Vinatieri. The clock continues to move. No snowplow in sight tonight. It's like, oh, did he tuck it? Did he not tuck it? What's that rule even mean? Who cares? This young Italian kid's about to kick through a blizzard out here. Adam Vinatieri will attempt a 45-yard field goal to try to tie it. The amount of pressure on that kick, the conditions are terrible. You got the offensive linemen and everybody kicking the snow off. This is the Patriots season on the line. Kick up on the way and it is good. It is good. 45 yards. Adam Vinatieri kick 
knocks it through the snow, and we're tied at 13. What a pressure kick by Adam Vinatieri, and it just gets over the crossbar. The most mentally tough human I've ever encountered, Adam Vinatieri, knocks it through. Just like he always does, by the way. That's why he, that's why he's going to play probably until he's 60. The Patriots see their season stay alive. If that play wasn't on the list, I would riot. When he made it, it kind of pulled us in a little more, and suddenly it's like, okay, well, you know we're going to lose in overtime. We didn't lose in overtime. And we didn't lose the next week. And we went on to the Super Bowl. It's never been the same in New England since. Well, I tell them anybody can catch the easy one. Yeah. You, you, you <laughs> gotta make the hard catch. 35 seconds left. First and goal for Oakland. They trail 26 21. The promised land is eight yards away. That's a pass to Saber. Look it, look it, look it. He runs. He's at the 15. He throws. It is. He puts down Raylan. Puts down Raylan. Clarence Davis made the play. I certainly didn't make the play. Vern Den Herter hits me, and I, don't, I get very little on the ball, and it's kind of a dying duck end over end deal. Back into a sea of hands in the end zone. An exciting play that'll be relived because of Clarence's effort. Davis got there first, and it was the Raiders' promised land. Of all the people on the team that were eligible receivers, the one guy you would never want to throw the ball to is Clarence Davis, because he had boards for hands. But guess what, at that moment, at that time in the game, he had the softest, surest hands in the history of the game. A bad half speed here in Oakland as they have defeated Miami 28 to 26. I'm walking through an airport. We just lost, and I just hear everybody go like, whoa, like everybody just, and I'm like, okay, like what's, and we look at the TV and he's making a catch. A lot of that play has to do with the setting. Sunday Night Football is the only game on TV, um, you know, and it's the Giants versus the Cowboys. That may be the greatest catch I've ever seen in my life. It's in the conversation. I don't know if it's the greatest play ever, but as far as, you know, what exactly happened on that play, it's definitely up there. He catches this ball with three fingers, his thumb, the other two fingers never touch the ball. It just was, you know, a play that I'll never forget. It changed my life forever. He broke the internet, you know, so. Obviously, a lot of response via Twitter. It was so great, hashtag Odell Beckham was trending worldwide. Everybody's like, wait, that's the greatest catch I've ever seen in my life. And I'm like, I've seen him make crazier catches than this. Jarvis Landry, he taught me how to catch with one hand. He really took it to a whole nother level. You know, I was doing that in high school. But I never went to practice it like this, so. Without Jarvis, honestly, I don't know exactly where I'd be at today, so that's my guy right there. That's the one who taught me how to catch everything. People may see this as one of the greatest catches that he's ever made, but, you know, there's still so much more to come from him. Oh, the Hail Mary. December 28, 1975, the NFC Divisional Championship game. Oh, love him. America's team. The Dallas Cowboys trailing 14-10 to the Minnesota Vikings. 32 seconds left. All hope seems lost. Now well, the Cowboys need a miracle. Now Staubach has to perform some kind of magic. Roger Staubach, one of the greatest Rogers mm -hmm. ever to take the field in any sport. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Roger Craig, just yeah. face it, it's true. He stepped back and then flung a pass as far as he could into the icy sky. He is going to go. Drew Pearson. He got it. Touchdown. Pearson goes in for the touchdown. What you believe in? A remarkable play. 
which we now know as the Hail Mary. 50 yards away from Peter, and back in that huddle, what is Roger Starbuck saying to his football team? Drew was such a great player with great hands. Uh, basically, I just uh, told Drew, just try to make a move and go deep. So we were in the shotgun and just pumped to the left to try to move Paul Krause a step or two over. After I pumped there, I threw a little bit short, and uh, Nate Wright slipped. I'm not saying Drew Pearson gave him a little shove, but I'm not saying he didn't <laughs> either. The Vikings are claiming offensive pass interference, but no flag was thrown. Now, if you're a Viking fan, it's Drew pushed off, but if you watch the film, it really wasn't any obvious push off. Drew Pearson made a great catch, caught it on his hip. He touches the ball! Touchdown, Dallas! Incredible! After the game, they asked what I was thinking. I said, well, I closed my eyes and said a Hail Mary. The AP writer wrote the story that the Hail Mary pass won the game. The term Hail Mary started that moment in the NFL. I'm kind of proud of that. Hail Mary answered again! Aaron Rodgers and uh, a, lot, a lot of people have thrown Hail Mary passes, but they didn't throw the Hail Mary pass. Here's why I love it. It's the essence of sports. It's the essence of everything that's great about America, to never give up, to always believe, to never stop trying, to always go on. And whenever I watch that play, the Hail Mary, the first one that gave that play that we now take for granted its name, you realize Roger Staubach to just not invent a word. He pretty much invented hope in sports. I have already had a call from Moscow they think that Marcus Allen is a new secret weapon, and they insist that we dismantle it. I have never seen anyone run against the Redskins like this. Marcus Allen, to me, was like, you know, Magic Johnson or Michael Jordan, who would, would come alive at the perfect moment. It was 12 seconds ago in the third quarter. I've said this a million times, it was metaphysical. It was just pure reaction. Allen. Putting back up Beal and Marcus Allen could be gone. 74 yards for Marcus Allen. The Raiders are starting to shove this one in the winner's column. Power play off the left side, 17 Bob Treo. Ken Coffee came up in a reverse field. He almost got the ball out. After I made that turn, Everything is just in slow motion, and you're running at warp speed. You just witnessed the longest run in Super Bowl history from scrimmage by Marcus Allen on a broken play. To see him do that in probably the most spectacular fashion, changing directions and taking it to the house, I just jumped up because I knew the LA Raiders would win the Super Bowl. What John Vicente said, nothing on earth. Nothing on earth that blocked or tackled or passed or ran. Could have stopped the Raiders on Black Sunday. I don't think anybody could have stopped me on that play. Man, it was a crazy experience because, I mean, we weren't supposed to be in the playoffs that year. We were a 7-9 team. I think we were the first team to ever make it to the playoffs with a losing record. And I remember everyone giving us crap about it. Even John Legend was talking trash about us. And the Seahawks not intimidated despite being 11-point underdogs at home and now holding on for dear life. You know that crowd in Seattle, man, they're awesome. They're loud. Man, they, they could sense an upset, and then they gave him the ball. Turn and hand to Lynch, left side. Finds a little bit of a hole, keeps his legs moving. He's across the 40, midfield, 45, he's on the run, Lynch. 40, pushes the man, 35, look at him go. He's down to 20, 15, he's going to go. He is going to go. Touchdown, Seahawks. Oh, my word. A 67-yard run. It's the loudest uh, place I've ever been in. situation and how many men he took out by himself. Unbelievable.
double by Marshawn Lynch. It was so loud in there that our press box was starting to tremble. It was shaking like it, it was going to collapse. That's how much uh, uh, noise that the fans were making at that particular time when he made that run. It was so loud that you, your ears were still ringing after the game. The crowd response was so intense after the 67-yard touchdown by Marshawn Lynch, it was picked up by seismometers and dubbed Beast. I couldn't even hear myself. The fans were going nuts, and I'm, I'm screaming as the replay's going on, get off me, get off me, he says to Tracy Porter. It was the loudest I've ever heard by far in an outdoor stadium. That's as good a run as I've ever seen in a playoff situation. I've been with Marshawn a long time, I and mean, we were you know, college roommates, and I, I've seen him do some crazy stuff, but that, uh, I don't think there's a better run. And that's a lot of cool things that happen. I can't remember them all, but I ain't never seen a run that I love more than Marshawn Lynch's run. I had a video. It was just around the house, and it was a history of Super Bowls. I vividly remember rewinding any time Lynn Swan was on. Swan's levitating leap is considered one of the greatest catches in football history. I know I watched it 250 times. From the videos I saw, greatest, greatest receiver ever. I mean, the guy had hops like, you know, he, he could have played in the NBA. Third down, Steeler. That's your back. The blitz is on for Dallas. The Steelers pick it up. And Swan out there. Oh, what a catch by Lynn Swan. It was a mistake. Obviously, Mark Washington tipped the ball away. Uh, if I had actually caught it without it being tipped, I might have been able to run into an end zone for a touchdown and score twice in that ball game. It was floating in the air still while we were falling down, and I was able to stay upright enough to make that catch. Look at the tip now by Lee Swan. But it wasn't like it was something I practiced or something I planned. It was just the fact that I had enough body control to stay under the ball and still be able to get my arms up, hands up around the ball and make the catch. Juan beat the defensive back, Mark Washington on a great play. You tip the ball away from Mark Washington, caught on the other side. Have you ever done that before? I've tipped the ball and caught it before, but uh, you know, last Super Bowl I didn't catch anything. You know, and this Super Bowl I caught three or four, I don't know, I caught three or four catches and uh, hey, you know, I just loved it. I thought I was pretty lucky. So it all comes down to this. Six seconds to play in Super Bowl 34. All right, guys. Last play of the game. Rams 23, Titans 16. It has never happened in Super Bowl history for a team to score on the last play of regulation. McNair drops. Throws right side for Dyson. He dives for the end zone. Didn't make it. He came up one yard short. The greatest show on turf got so many accolades, right? So much attention. But our defense, man, came in hand. Our defense and Mike Jones changed the narrative. They changed our legacy as players, all of us. Mike was a guy that always was first at work. Sometimes he'd be in a suit, have a briefcase. He was about his business. So to see him make that play, it all came from his film study. He had recognized that formation and that play from previous film that he studied. So I think he maybe have even baited McNair to make that throw. Mike Jones, the linebacker. You don't hear a lot about him. He is the guy that is able to take Dyson down before he can get to the goal line. You know, you come across in the corner of your eye, you see nothing but yellow paint. And it's just, it's so vivid, you think you're just right there. Like, I almost felt like, even if I get tackled, I'm falling in the end zone. And for whatever reason, when he left his feet, my momentum pulled his body way around. He's able to get his left hand on my left leg, and I couldn't extend. If he doesn't do that, we're probably going overtime. And I like to believe we're the one that I think they were tired. And if you look at the highlights of the game, you hear Vermeil talk to Kevin Carter and tell him, man, you're getting out now. You went out of the game with 26 seconds to go? Jesus! They were dog tired. I've seen some of the great finishes of Super Bowl, whether it's wide right Scott Norwood or, you know, Tyree's helmet catch, or, you know, there's been so many amazing Super Bowl moments. Um, 
when you realize it's the last game of the season, this is for, for all the marbles and how much these guys care about it. It makes not just you know the fact that, that Dyson came up one yard short, but the fact that somebody tackled him one yard short. You know, both of those guys were trying to do their job and one guy did it one yard better.